All right, chapter five, section two is, uh, it's called Settling on the Great Plains. But one of the things I want to go over before we get into that section is the in-between here, the stuff talking about gold mining, because the mining was really important, you know, for you to understand it, because that's largely what brought people out west, you know. It really started in 1849 with the gold rush in California. That's really what just started the floodgates of people moving out west and then in 1858 in Colorado they discovered it uh it was you know there's what you sometimes what we have in our head of what mining is you know like when I was a kid we went I don't even remember where we were my parents took me somewhere and we did a little gold mining you know with a little sifting thing panning for gold is what that was called you know did people from time to time find a gold big gold nugget yeah, it happened, you know, just like people win the lottery. It was not something you could bet on, though, you know, and and make a living at. But you could, they would find little slivers of gold, and they came up and made these sluice boxes, which was just like more, you know, it's better panning, basically. It was bigger. But then you, you can see in the picture, you know, ultimately what ended up happening is a lot of these miners moved out there, was they were hoping they'd strike it rich, and then they didn't. And then they were just out there, out west, with no way to live or survive. And the only way to get the gold out of the ground, it was actually way down in the ground, and, you know, like, that you had to have machinery and tons of people with pickaxes to dig it out. So individuals didn't have the means to get it out. These people were dirt poor. So what ended up happening is mining companies, big rich dudes that own mining companies buy up the land from all these individuals who couldn't get the gold out and then the individuals would end up working for the mining companies. And it was, you know, how the mining companies got workers. And uh, it gave the people that had moved out there to find gold, gave them a job, a steady job, which paid them, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. But they were no longer able to, like if they found you found a gold nugget then you couldn't keep it like it wasn't yours it was the mining companies so but it, it ultimately did you know it settled the west it got a lot of people to move out west and um a lot of times they'd take their whole families a lot of towns would come up you know there's there's still old towns in the mountains out in colorado and I'm sure other states you know they're called ghost towns it's not because they're ghosts there it's because the people would go out there, they'd find a little, you know, a little stream of ore. You know, by the way, ore is O-R-E here, not O-R, spelled O-R-E. It's just mixed in with the dirt. You don't dig, like when you find iron ore, you don't dig down in the ground and find like a straight chunk of iron. You can, I mean, that's from time to time you can, but most of the iron is mixed in, just like it's a little powdery stuff mixed in with the soil. You know, and it makes it look, the soil look red. Like around where we live, there's a lot of iron in the soil. You know, just like gold. You dig down in a, a you know, a load of ore of gold, and you might find a gold nugget, a solid chunk of gold here and there. But most of the gold, the vast majority of it, is just little flakes that are mixed in with the dirt. You know, so that's what the ore is. But anyway, it was, uh, they'd find... A load of, but a load is L-O-D-E. There's a different word. I don't remember if that's a homonym or what it is, but a load of ore means just like a, they would find an area where there's some ore in the ground. You know, like a load of crap is L-O-A-D. Right here we're talking about L-O-D-E, load of like gold ore or silver ore. All right. Um, anyway, the, the little towns, if, when people got there, if they dug up the gold all out of the ground, and there wasn't no more, there wasn't no reason to stay. I mean, you're in the mountains. It wasn't like you was growing crops and hunting and stuff. So a lot of times the people would just, they'd built little buildings and a little town had popped up, but then there wasn't no reason for them to stay there. So they just leave and they didn't take the buildings down. They just left them. And that's all over the place. So that's what you know. We now have, you know, they're called ghost towns, which some of them you can visit. They're like tourist attractions. And then some of them, there was so much gold there, people kept coming. And eventually, you know, women showed up and women civilized the place and started churches and schools and made it more like a real society. Because when a bunch of men are there by themselves, that women, it's just chaos. And that's what it was. These were really dangerous 
places, these, they were called boom towns that popped up around where they found ore, iron ore, gold or silver ore. And, you know, eventually some guy may be there and say, you know what, it freaking sucks digging in the rock all day. Uh, but I tell you what, these people ain't got nowhere to eat breakfast. So I'm gonna start me a restaurant and sell the crap out of some eggs and breakfast and stuff for way high prices and I'm gonna make a killing. So some people did that, and then some people just decided, you know what, I don't want to dig in the dirt for gold. I'm going to start a general purpose store where I sell them all kinds of stuff, sell them pickaxes and boots and things like that, and I'm going to make it. So eventually you had a whole economy pop up if there was enough ore in the ground. So section two, like I said, it's called Settling on the Great Plains. It's a pretty short section. It's kind of to the point. It's just about what these people went through when they moved out to the Great Plains. And remember, the Great Plains is freaking huge. You know, uh, when settlers, when people first saw it and started going out there, they originally actually called it the Great American Desert. Because I, I've told you, you know, before, there's, it doesn't get enough water to grow trees. You know, a desert is an area that gets a you know, low amount of rainfall. And it got nothing to do with temperature. There's cold, Antarctica is a desert. You know, it doesn't hardly ever snow there. Just when it snows, it never melts because it's so cold. But uh, the Great Plains is not a desert. It does get a little more rain than required to be a desert, but not much. It doesn't get enough to grow, you know, you, you're not going to go to the Great Plains and grow freaking watermelons or tomatoes. Now, today, with modern irrigation and stuff like that, yeah, you probably can, but then the, we're talking about the mid and late 1800s here. You know, they wasn't doing that. Uh, about the only crop that, at the time that would grow out there really good, the main crop they grew was wheat. You know, there's types of wheat that can grow in really arid places. Uh, they did eventually figure out other types of farming. One of the main ones was called uh, dry farming, which which is basically all it is. Y'all should know if you've ever dug down in the ground, you know, the further you dig down, the more moisture there is. So they would plant the seeds further down in the ground. So one seed had to have a bigger area to draw the moisture from so you couldn't have the crops growing near as dense as we grow them around here in the east you know because we get a lot we get plenty of rain out there they couldn't do that so you know we moved out there um first thing was why were people going out there it's a simple answer railroads uh, abraham lincoln you know keep in mind history is more just the way it is in a history book where it's about one topic. You know, right slap in the middle of the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln signed the bill or law or whatever to create the Transcontinental Railroad and build it. Uh, so he wanted the country from coast to coast to be connected. He wanted, he wanted California to be connected with the East Coast. So they start building it. You know, it's a huge undertaking. We'll talk about it some more. Uh, in class, like when they're building it, this is at a time you gotta keep this in mind. And you'll hear me say this a lot. Like all year, this is a time there wasn't any kind of government regulations on stuff. This is also at a time when the government actually paid for things. We didn't go twenty trillion dollars in debt like we are now. Uh, so the government wanted the Transcontinental Railroad built, but they didn't have no money to build it. So. They just, they did have a lot of land. They owned the Louisiana Purchase. So, and bought all the land we took from Mexico in the Mexican-American War. So, the government, you know, it was some shady, corrupt business dealings went on. But the government just told the railroads, hey, if you build this track, we'll give you, for where you build the track, we'll give you like 10 miles around it. Like, five miles north, five miles south. All that land, you can have it. If you want to sell it and make money, do it. If you want to keep it, fine, whatever. So the railroad companies did that. They got, I mean, they ended up owning freaking a big chunk of the country, railroad companies. And they did sell a lot of the land to make money and stuff, and they made a lot of it. But that, you know, personally, I'm not, if you tell me, hey, go move out here, start you a new life. By the way, if you go out there, there's a real good chance a freaking bear's going to eat you or you're going to die of some crazy disease. I mean, like, I'm not going to go, you know, because I don't want to get eaten by a bear or a wolf or anything else. And that was how it was. You know, people, yeah, they knew we had this 
huge amount of land out west, but before the railroads, who wanted to go? I mean, there were people. There were actually thousands of people that went, but not many, you know, in the grand scheme of the, the total amount of people in our country. But when you got the railroad built and you can get on a train and go out there and wham, bam, you're out west and you ain't got nothing. You know, a bear hasn't had the chance to eat you or a wolf or whatever, you know, or, you know, you hadn't had to, like, cross a river and pay some Indians a fee or they'll scalp you and murder you. I mean, you didn't have to worry about that stuff when the railroads were built. So hundreds of thousands of families, you know, left. Like up to 600,000 families, so probably over a million people, you know. Uh, the government, further to encourage it, the government passed this, one of the most famous laws in American history. It's called the Homestead Act. An act is just a, it's a law. And the Homestead Act gave away like 10% of the country was given away. Now, it was supposed to be for individual farmers. Families were supposed to get 160 acres. Uh, but it ended up rich people and companies ended up getting a lot of the land and controlling it. But it did, I mean... There's a lot of people got the land too. Now, what they actually found out though was in a lot of cases, especially in the Western Great Plains where it was drier, they, 160 acres was not enough because they had to do the dry farming and you needed more land to be able to sustain a farm. So uh, this is also before the time, you know, most of you probably don't know all about the regulations on farmers and things like that, the government has all kinds of regulations and that stuff today to make sure we don't starve as a country. They, they make sure we don't, you know, burn up all the soil where we can't grow anything 10 years from now. You know, they, they have rules on that stuff, but that, none of that existed at this time. And also something else, you know, while this is going on, you got these huge, super important inventions for farming happening which makes, that further encourages more people to move out west. So, you know, and you end up, the government has to create this, they pass this other act called the Morrill Act, which basically just gave land to start colleges and, and um, money to help people learn how to be farmers. Some of these companies would, these railroad companies or whoever, they wanted, remember, railroad companies were selling the land that the government gave them, gave them to build the railroad, so they wanted people to come buy the land. They would send people to Europe and other places, you know, China, probably some of them came from China to help build the railroad, but they were like slaves. We'll talk about them in a minute. But so they would send people to Europe and say, hey, you know, in Europe, all the land, I mean, people have been living in Europe for thousands of years owning land. You know, they'd been living over here, too, because remember the Native Americans over here didn't own, they didn't look have private land ownership but in europe there wasn't any land so if you were born a peasant and you didn't own land well guess what you wasn't going freaking on land you didn't even have the option to because all the land had been bought up a thousand years ago or more so when you go over there to europe and you're like hey y'all want to come to america guess what your life sucks here and you're never going to have any chance to make it any better you can come to america and we will give you 160 acres of land. All you got to do is freaking show up and it's yours. And you got to live on it five years, I think, before it was officially yours. Like thousands of immigrants from Europe were like, heck yeah, let's do it. Uh, there's a reason the Minnesota Vikings football team is called the Minnesota Vikings. Guess where Vikings came from? Vikings lived in the, what's called the Scandinavian countries, which are up in Northern Europe, you know, um, Norway, Sweden, places like that. That's where the Vikings lived. Like half, I don't know if it was half, it was a big, like a quarter or half of the whole population of Norway, like left. I mean, it was a big chunk of their population left and moved to America. And almost all of them moved up there, what's now Minnesota. So, you go to Minnesota, you see a lot of blonde-headed people. Well, that's because going back hundreds, or really even over a thousand years, their ancestors were living in Scandinavia. They're Vikings. Now their NFL team is the Minnesota Vikings. We're going to talk about another team in a second. It's a college football team or college sports. You know all their sports. Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Sooners. If you've ever seen as a Clint went around. It was on ridiculousness. The Sooners, before the game, they ride around on the field in a wagon, 
like a covered wagon. And I've had kids be like, why do they do that? Well, it's, here's why. You know, within the ridiculousness the episode, it was this past year, the wagon flipped over. It was pretty funny. Nobody got hurt, though, so that was good. The frontier was pretty much gone. America, like, by the 1880s, we had had, we had five transcontinental railroads. They were going all across the country. So, the last place that Indians, Native Americans, had been pushed out of, you know, and put on reservations was the Oklahoma Territory, which is now the, see, the uh, state of Oklahoma. All right? And the government, they put it in all newspapers on this day. I don't remember the day. It may tell you in the book. On this day, this time, we're going to open up Oklahoma. This is the last frontier, and it's first come, first serve. So whoever gets there and claims the best land, all you got to do is get to it, and you claim it, and it's freaking yours, all right? So, like on whatever day, thousands, literally thousands of people show up, and like the government's there, like right on the border of Oklahoma, and they like ball a bugle, and they're like, all right, everybody go, and everybody rushes in, they're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. We're going to get some awesome land. And they get to all the best land, and there's people already living there. Like white people, I guess probably some black people too. But there were Americans already living there, not Native, not Indians. All right? And they were on the best land. They already had houses built and, you know, all that stuff. Well, the people that did it legally and went when the government told them to, they called those people that had snuck in sooner than they were supposed to, they started calling them Sooners. So it was being a Sooner was actually kind of a slur, you know. It was kind of making fun of your, you know, calling you a bad name from somebody else, like almost like saying you're a cheater, you know, because they really were. They, they illegally snuck into the Oklahoma Territory early or sooner than everybody else did and claimed all the best land. And there wasn't any way to prove, you know, they had got there earlier so they just got to keep the land but the reason now oklahoma college is called sooners is because the original americans not, not talking about the native americans that originally lived there but the original you know european americans or whatever that kind of white people that came into oklahoma were those sooners they were the first ones that were living there so that's why they named their college that but it was uh it's hard life you had you know you had some new inventions that made it a little easier by the later you got close to 1900, like a John Deere, is he invented this new steel plow that just made plowing up a field to plant crops super, super easy. Well, easier, way easier. Cyrus McCormick had this big reaping machine where before you reaped, which meant you had these big things like the Grim Reaper, that big scythe blade that he has. That's how... They were called sling bay because you'd sling it back and forth. And that's how you chop the wheat or whatever. Well, Cyrus McCormick convinced this reaper that could just you put it on the back of a horse and drag it, and it would chop down your whole field. It made it way easier. So that stuff made a lot farming a lot easier, and one family could farm a lot more land. Uh, so they lived, there wasn't, again, there wasn't a wood other than your wagon, so you would often break down your wagon to make like door frames and windows and you'd cut up sod out of the grass. Like, and make, like if any of you have ever laid sod, it sucks. It's one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. It's, it's a terrible job. If I had to lay sod forever, you know, for a job, I would find another job because it would be awful. But uh, they made their whole house out of sod. It would have been nasty. There would have been bugs. I mean, you didn't have running water. You would have had to, I mean, you know, Cleanliness like we have now was unheard of back then. And, uh, well, not surprisingly, life expectancy wasn't great. Cause, you know. But eventually, as more and more people move out there, it gets more civilized. You get, you know, women were the ones, again, that civilized things. They started schools and stuff like that on the plains. And, uh, it got better. And, uh, you know, time went on. You had farmers... The plight of farmers is going to be a continuing story that lasts, you know, through the mid 1900s. Because what would happen is sometimes farmers' prices would be high and they'd be doing good, and then you know prices would drop and they'd lose everything, and then the bank would get their farm. Well, then you still need somebody to sell that farm, so the bank would sell that farm to somebody else, and then they'd go out there and the same thing would happen to them. And eventually, you get these big giant farms called bonanza farms that pop up, which were basically like the 
plantations in the old south. They're huge, huge, huge thousands, I guess sometimes even maybe millions of acres and all growing like one thing. Well, then you have a few years of drought that kills the crop the bonanza farms grow and they, you know, fall by the wayside and go away. So eventually a lot of people couldn't cut it and there were there was a big mass exodus out of the the uh, Great Plains, but then people did move back, and some of them stayed, you know, and as we get up into the mid, you know, early 1900s, you start, we'll get to the Great Depression, we'll get to Dust Bowl, we'll talk all about what caused that later. But uh, eventually, though, as you get thousands of farm, like farm families moved out there, when you got lots of people that are all doing the same thing, that means they want to elect politicians that support what they want. So now you got a huge voting block out there, which leads into the, you know, what's called the populist movement, which is section three.